Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. G'day, I'm Troy Dean, and you're watching Rinse and Repeat in Action on Business Blueprint. In this series, we are helping you create recurring revenue because recurring revenue really is the holy grail of all business models. In the first series, Rinse and Repeat, we actually walked you through the six-part formula and methodology for creating recurring revenue. In this series, re uh, Rinse and Repeat in Action, we're actually interviewing real-life business owners and showing you how they have built recurring revenue business models. In this particular episode, I'm going to introduce you to my good friend and my personal trainer, Matt Coles, who uh, went from selling time for money as a personal trainer to a recurring revenue business model by building a premium or what he calls a boutique 24-7 gym. There's lots to learn here. I hope you enjoy meeting Matt Coles as much as I enjoy this interview. So without further ado, let's go and meet Matt Coles. Matt Coles, welcome to Rinse and Repeat. Thank you, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming in. Uh, for those that don't know, um, don't know you or your business, tell us a little bit about your background and what your current business is. My well, background is martial arts training, um, personal training. Um, been doing that for about 15 years, 16 years, and decided to move into owning my own gym, taking a big leap, taking a big risk. Wow. Yeah. How did you get into personal training? I remember you told me this interesting story yeah. once. Yeah, it's, a, well, it's a true story and it's a funny story, but uh, back when I was 15, um, one of my best mates, um, fathers, who was a self-made millionaire, came from nothing, said to me, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, the standard question. I was like, well, I don't know. And he goes, look, I'll tell you how to pick your, your career. He said, there's 24 hours in a day. He goes, so eight hours a day, you're sleeping. Uh, so that's got to be fun. You know, eight hours a day is your free time, whether it's two hours before work, six hours after, so that's got to be fun, it's all yours. So the other eight hours consists of your job. So what would you do if you had a couple of million dollars in the bank, your house paid off, a couple of cars, a white picket fence? So that's pretty easy, you know, I would train martial arts and kickboxing in the morning and then I'd go pump some weights at night. And he goes, that's how you should make your job. That should be your career. Work out how you can get paid for that. Now, 15, when I was 15, What's that? That's a long time ago, nearly 30 <laughs> years now. And there was no real personal training you know, industry. I was like, this guy's crazy. Who's going to pay me to lift weights and uh, kick him? You know, really? Who's, who's going to pay for that? So it sort of drifted off. And, you know, I got a lot of just dead end jobs, just jobs to make, you know, pay the bills and things like that. And uh, one day getting ready for a fight, I've broken a window in my martial arts school. And the owner said, look, you're going to have to pay for that. And I said, well, how much is that? It's a big window. And uh, he says about $400. And back in those days, my wage was like $430 a week. I said, well, I can't pay for it. He says to me, well, you're going to have to work for it. I said, what do you mean? He goes, we're going to have to teach classes. I said, well, I can do that. So I've taught classes. And then all of a sudden, people started saying, hey, you know, can you train me privately? I said, well, I don't really do that. This is what I do for a job. And, you know, they said, but I'll pay you money to teach me. So I said, OK. And um, then it sort of evolved to, you know, you'd have your, your clients getting hurt and injured being, you know, kickboxers or boxing or martial arts. I thought I'd better get a, a degree of personal training. And back in those days, it was, it was tough to get one. You know, there's a lot more involved than there is now. And uh, then it just dawned on me, hang on a second. I'm training people kickboxing and martial arts, and then I'm training people to lift weights. My mind goes back 30 years previously and thinks, that guy knew what he was on about. I mean, <laughs> you know, sometimes these self-made billionaires know what they're talking about, you yeah, know? Yeah. So that's how I fell into the job that's of personal training and, you know, martial arts instructor. That's a great story. And um, a full disclaimer, I now am one of those people who actually pays Matt to uh, make me lift weights and hit me occasionally. So uh, there you go. Um, so tell me about Workout Zone, which is now your, your, current, uh, your, your current business. Why did you start Workout Zone? What was the motivation? There were probably several motivating factors there, but um, I've always dreamt about owning my own gym. Um, from starting to, to teach martial arts to, to personal training, everybody was sort of like, you've, you've got to open your own gym, you've got to open your own gym, it'd be great. And, you know, again, that sort of just resonated through me. I thought, you know what, that's, 
that's what I've got to do. I mean, the natural progression for a personal trainer has to be owning their own gym, otherwise you've got to get out of the industry. There's only only so many six o'clock starts you can do. Mm. You know, there's only so many clients you can do. There's only so long your body's going to last holding pads uh, for boxing or kickboxing. Mm. Um, so in my mind, it was just a natural progression uh, that it would have to be. And I would love doing it, you know, to put my name to something, to have worked in so many different gyms and thought, they're not quite right. They're good, but this is lacking, or this is great, but this, this is really bad, you know. Um, so that's what got my mind there, and I guess I've had that in the back of my mind for a good 15, 16 years now, and it's come to fruition. Yeah, you've definitely, you have been playing the long game. You've been, you know, chatting about it ever since I've known you. Um, tell me how, so previously to opening Workout Zone, you were literally trading time for money. You would turn up, you'd train a client, you get paid, and if you weren't training a client, you weren't getting paid. Correct. Whereas the gym now is a membership, so people pay per week to have unlimited access to the gym 24-7. How has that changed the way that, that you approach things? How, how is it different having a recurring revenue gym rather than just turning up and trading time for money? I still trade, I trade time for money, as you know. Yeah, you do, yeah. Um, because that's my passion. You know, that, that, that's what I want, that one-on-one -on -one, um, engagement of that person and to see them do better. Um, having recurring revenue or you know, people subscribing to come to the gym um, it's very different in the fact that when you're working one-on-one, -on -one, you've got to rely on your body to hold up. You've got to rely on your clients to rock up. Um, whether that be, you know, they fail to come on a weekly basis due to sickness, due to work commitments, due to family commitments, due to just not wanting to get off their ass. <laughs> um, there's a lot of factors that go into that client coming back, you know, week after week, you know, um, and yourself getting up week after week, day after day, putting your body through that. Uh, having a business where people subscribe, whether it's reoccurring in its revenue, I get to attract a broader audience that want to come under the roof for many different reasons, not just for the service that I provide, for the service that people that work under the building or under the roof provide, uh, people that just want to do their own thing, plug their headphones in and, and go crazy. You know, just want to disappear from the world. So there's a lot of different people wanting different things from the facility. Um, that makes the stream of revenue, I suppose, um, more steady, more constant, mm -hmm. uh, with a bigger audience to rely on. So if people drop off for whatever reason, uh, there's more people coming in. If somebody doesn't want to turn up to the gym, they're paying every week anyway. It's not the hour. They're paying every week, whether they come once a week or seven days a week. So if somebody's having a bad week or a bad month, they're still going to pay the membership because they want to be a part of that gym. Mm. They want to know they've got the option to go to the gym. Um, they might not be using it, but I want the option. If I do want to get off my ass today, mm. I'm going to go. Mm. Uh, and that's a big difference to somebody saying, well, you know, I don't really want to get up and get off the couch and stop eating my chocolate. I've got to pay this guy, you know, for the hour that I don't want to be there. So it, it's a big difference that way. I think when people have something they're paying for uh, continually, uh, they're more motivated to use it. Oh, I'm wasting my money. I better go just today. Mm, you know? Definitely. They've got more skin in the game. They've got more to lose. That's right. <clears throat> I want to talk a little bit more about the kind of the headaches that having a business uh, has compared to just being a personal trainer, but we'll dive into uh, uh, we'll dive into that in more detail a little bit later on. But I want to talk now about um, what are some of the challenges in in having in selling a recurring revenue product versus just selling personal training at an hourly rate. Like, what are, what are some of the objections or some of the um, challenges in actually getting that message across to the customer? Pricings and options of pricing is a real. A real concern like it's one of the probably the main things uh, that's raised by probably 20% of the target market that you're aiming for 80% will come in and say that's your price for read your marketing uh, happy to pay it uh, here you go whether they use a three six or twelve month prepaid uh, whether they do their direct debit billing um, they're happy to, to take on board what you provided 20% will argue the fact that they want this period of time or that period of time um, they want to pay a bit less because their last gym, which is falling down and got you know holes in the roof, um, charges them less. Um, they want to pay less than you're asking them to pay because you don't have classes. Yet the gym they're going to that has classes is charging. 
To continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.